So first one is conduction. So how does heat move in a solid? Okay, when the copper rod is, this is the copper rod that we see here. When the copper rod is heated by this Bunsen burner, heat energy moves along the metal rod. Okay, so when you heat it up, this end here is hot first. Right, this end here is actually cooler. Right, when you start to heat it up, right, the fire here, heat it up. So the heat travels from the hot end to the cool end. This movement of heat is what we term as conduction. Heat is traveled through the solid by conduction. Okay, we need to use, I mean, how do we explain conduction as actually using by the particulate model, which is your kinetic particle theory, KPT. Okay, so now, my point is that this is an example of a metal. The metal atoms gain energy from the flame and vibrate faster. So each of these atoms, they gain energy and vibrate faster. So these atoms heat the neighboring atoms. So these atoms here, I imagine my fire is here. These atoms here heat the neighboring atoms over here and causing them to vibrate faster. This process is repeated from atom to atom along the rod making heat transfer from the hot end to the cold, cooler end. Okay. So, we say that conduction is the movement of heat through the material without any flow of the material material medium medium because you see these atoms here do not flow from here this point over here to the end what happens is that it through the collision heat is transferred vibrate faster heat into these guys here they vibrate faster heat into these guys here heat vibrate faster so each time is a heat they transfer energy and causes the other atoms to vibrate faster so that's why conduction is termed as the movement of heat or transfer of heat through material Okay, it must be through a material without any flow. Okay, no flow of the material medium. So let's go through some examples. So are all conductors the same? In actual fact, not all conductors are the same. Some conduct heat faster, some doesn't. So we term that as good conductor of heat and poor conductor of heat. Okay, poor conductors also term as insulators. So what are some examples of good conductor of heat? They are your metals. Poor conductor of heat, they are your non-metals, such as wood, plastic, air, and etc. So, based on our understanding of the particulate model in heat conduction, which of the following states, solid, liquid, or gas, is the best conductor of heat? So, remember we talked about the particles colliding into each other to transfer the heat. Very closely packed, not so closely packed very far apart. So in actual fact, the best conductor of heat are actually solid. And we're talking about conduction here. The key is actually conduction. Best conductors are actually your solid because the particles are the nearest to one another compared to liquid and gas. Therefore, heat can be transferred easily among the particles. Okay? Now, if you look at this example here, okay, I got eyes here with the wire gauze and it melts very slowly. I know that the flame is burning over here, so the water here will get heated up. I know that how can the heat be traveled from the water to the ice? It must be through conduction. So if the ice melts very slowly, and I'm heating here up, how does, how there's only one possibility, is because the heat is conducted very slowly through the water. So, what happens is when heat is conducted very slowly through the water, the heat doesn't reach the ice, so that's why the ice melts very slowly. So the key point here is that actually, water is a poor conductor of heat. Okay, it conducts heat poorly. Next one. Okay, this is a fact you need to know, but this is also um, something you need to remember. Okay, vacuum is actually the best insulator of heat. The best. Why? Because in actual fact, in vacuum, there's no particles. I wouldn't even say air. I said there's no particles present. Now, if there's no particles, can they, are there anything to collide into each other? Definitely not. So that's why without any particles, heat transmission via conduction cannot happen as there's no medium for transfer. Okay? So I'm going through each of these one by one. Next one. Why, is, why are metals a better heat conductor than non-metal? So we're comparing metal versus non-metal. Okay, 
this one is also added on. You know that we know that for conduction, okay, we talk about these atoms over here vibrate faster, colliding to these atoms, colliding into these atoms and they transfer the heat. This is termed as molecular vibration. In addition, metals have actually electrons that are free to move. Okay? These electrons that are free to move, for example, when the heat reaches here, they will fly across the, the medium and transfer it to the at and transfer their energy to the atoms which they collide with. So there's two ways of heat or two methods of heat conduction in metals because of molecular vibration and free electron diffusion. Okay, so metals actually has two ways of conduction. Whereas for non-metal you only got molecular vibration. So just take note of this metal is better because there's two methods. Whereas for non-metals, not so good because only molecular vibration. Okay, now next one. Okay, so you can see here, carry on. Okay, so this is a continuation explanation because if you look at it carefully, non-metals got no free electrons. This is a zoom in. Whereas for metals, they have this thing, the free electrons, as you can see, the little yellow, yellow color stuff. They were diffused through the material to aid in the heat transfer, to help in the heat transfer. So, as you can see here, this is just a further explanation to look into the structure of the material. Okay, so this is why metals are better conductors, because they conduct heat via molecular vibration and free electron diffusion. Now, in the next up, we're going to go into the application for conduction. But we're going to do a stop here so that the parts do not get too long.